X Corporation, formerly known as Twitter, is under attack today by an advertising boycott aimed at destroying the last major media corporation respecting free speech in America. In 2022, Twitter was purchased by Elon Musk for $44 billion. Musk said that he bought Twitter to keep free speech alive. It's kind of the, the town square uh, of the current age. Now, today's giant media corporations operate in league with big government, and that combination gives them monopoly control over controlling the narrative. Today, physicians and even a United States president have been censored by these giant media corporations in this giant media cartel. That's just the way it is. So their control was broken when Musk purchased Twitter. Most user accounts on Twitter are free user accounts, and so Twitter funds its operations by selling advertising. This makes Twitter or X vulnerable to advertiser boycotts. But by September 2023, Twitter slash X had experienced a 60% decline in advertising revenue. On December 1, Walmart announced that they had pulled all advertising from the X platform. Big tech giant Apple has paused advertising on X, they announced. In November, IBM stopped advertising on X. Other advertisers that have left include Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, Comcast, Discovery, NBC Universal, and many others. On December 7, Disney announced that they had stopped advertising on X. In a controversial statement on November 30, 2023, Elon Musk said this, I hope they stop. He said, don't advertise. If someone is going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, and Musk went on to say in no uncertain terms, that he would not reinstate that, that enormous control, censorship type control on the X platform. Now, strictly speaking, of course, advertisers have no obligation to compel them or force them to buy advertising on Twitter X. However, the government dash media cartel is now engaged in an attempt to destroy X. And the basis of this effort is laughable. Owner Musk at one point recently made a post where he spoke a little bit too broadly of Jewish groups, but he became much more specific the very same day, and this is what he said. I am deeply offended by ADL's messaging and any other groups who push de facto anti-white racism or anti-Asian racism or racism of any kind. Nevertheless, the media cartel leapt on this. They leapt on his original post and continued to defame him as some kind of an anti-Semite. One of the ugliest entities you can find on the internet is known as Media Matters. And they signed up for an X account. And on that account, they began searching and linking to, specifically to anti-Semitic literature, anti-Jewish types of posts and links and articles and so forth. And each one they linked to, they liked it. They pressed a button there and they told the Twitter platform, the X platform, this is what I like. Now, the way the algorithm works on these social media things is that whatever you view, you get more of that. You've had that experience, haven't you, where you viewed a product uh, somewhere, you were searching for it, and suddenly the next couple of days, wherever you went, whenever you looked at something on your phone, you got all these advertisements for that same product because somebody sold, sold the fact that you clicked on something, they sold it around, and other advertisers bought it and uh, sending you those ads continuously. So that's the way that this works. So the algorithm feeds you more of what you uh, look at. And so here's a user account that is uh, unnaturally just focused explicitly on this anti-Jewish stuff. So what do you think happened? Well, the Twitter algorithm began, the X algorithm began to feed them ads. And what were their, their ads? They were just the different people who were advertising, the different corporations. And what were they putting those ads next to? Well, on this particular user account, they were putting their ads next to anti-Semitic material because that was the only content that that user had in his feed on his account. So when these advertisements began to appear, uh, of course, Media Matters took and did screenshot it. They took photographs, they took pictures of the advertiser uh, with their material appearing next to, you know, material that's pro-Hitler or something like that, this kind of stuff. And then they took all this and they put it in articles and they whipped it up on their website. In fact, you can see it in the link uh, at the end of this item here if you want to look at it. And so they put out the word that Twitter had become a anti-Semitic hellhole and that it was uh, destroying the reputation of these fine advertisers by placing their content next to anti-Semitic content. So you can see this entire thing is unnatural, inorganic. It's not normally the way things are on Twitter slash X. Nevertheless, these events are being used by these large corporations 
to destroy Twitter, to either force them to go back to the, the very much controlling free speech attitude, you know, that, uh, that all the other platforms practice in different measure, or to just destroy Twitter, destroy X now so that free speech uh, is hindered. So these, these basically cheap shots are being used by these giant corporations in an attempt to destroy Twitter. So what's the special point of interest to us? Well, think about this. Without freedom of speech 250 years ago, the British crown would have perhaps suppressed, done its utmost to suppress things in America, and perhaps the American Revolution would never have happened. In the time of Christ, if the religious authorities had had that kind of power, they certainly would have used it to do their utmost to suppress Jesus in his teachings. Again, when we come to the time of the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, uh, it was the invention of the printing press, the ability to speak freely and share viewpoints openly that was key to the development of the Protestant Reformation. See, liberty of thought is the very essence of Protestantism. Today, the advertising and media cartel is attempting to starve Twitter slash X of advertising revenue to pressure a return to a censorship regime. They're determined, if they can do it, to recover to the maximum their ability to control the narrative, control the way stories are framed and how they're framed, what's right and what's wrong, the viewpoints they want the people to have. The major corporations who control what we are and are not told, what we can and cannot speak. Here it is. They are not neutral, but they are decidedly hostile to free speech. This isn't a dystopian future that's still coming that might happen someday. This is the world today in the 2020s. This is real life. This is the world we live in now. So friend, one day when attention turns to us, when our views on obedience to God and God's word have come to the front and they stand outside of the approved narratives and stories. Will there be a space for free speech for us to state our views? Will there be something like an open Twitter slash X town square? Will that town square be open or closed? Think about it. I'm Larry Kirkpatrick for Horizon Watch. Hey, if you want to keep up with news stories like this and how they relate to Bible prophecy and spiritual matters, just click over here on the URL code on the, uh, on the URL and subscribe to, to the newsletter. We come out around once a month and you'll get more of these same kinds of stories. God bless you.